Get ready. Hey Disney lovers and welcome back. This week I'm going to take you through my personal top 10 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe films or the MCU. So I have watched and considered all the MCU and I'll leave a list of all 22 films in the description section for you to tell me your favourites. If you're new to the channel, thanks for joining us. We make Disney videos every Wednesday and geeky videos on a Monday, but lots of other random video drops throughout the month. So make sure to click that subscription button and the notification bell to stay up to date. Just to let you know that in December 2020, we will be looking at our days and things may change from January 2021 onwards. But just keep an eye out for that. But let's just move on. So at number 10, we're going to go in with Ant-Man and the Wasp. Now, I did really enjoy this. I thought it's very similar to the first one. Uh, with a similar type of humor and things like that in it but i thought this just added a little bit extra in there with uh, obviously the storyline and the introduction of the wasp so yeah that's why it's my number 10 and not the original ant-man because i just thought it was a little bit better and obviously you have ghost in it as well and her character was fantastic so that is my number 10. We're going to very quickly go through some of these guys. And I'm just going to be doing it as quick as I can. So I might be doing a lot of uhs and ums. Okay, so I'm just going to be going with the flow. But we're going to move on to number 9. Which is Captain America the Winter Soldier. So why did I prefer this one instead of the first one? To be honest, I love the suit that Captain America has got on here. And it's also, it's like... He's not all perfect and things like that because obviously when Bucky comes around, he kind of triggers him off a little bit, doesn't it? And he uh, he goes off the rails a bit. But then he also does um, un unveil the Hydra threat and everything. So, yeah, that's why, that's why I kind of like this one. It's really cool on there. Um, I also like the partnership between... Uh, Black Widow and Captain America 2 in this film. Um, yeah, but it's mainly all done to do his suit. It's a pretty cool suit. Look at it. But yeah, that is uh, number 9. So we're going to move on to number 8, which is Black Panther. Now this, I thought, was a great film. It's like, it's quite low down in my top 10, um, only because it's another origin-y type story. Now it's not fully origin, because obviously the origin... Um, of how he becomes king is in civil war but um, how he became the black panther we don't 100 percent know in the mcu uh, but this is um, a bit more about how he becomes um, the true king that he is uh, that we know um, so it is a phase three film um, and it was quite strange to get a phase three origin story into it but it didn't feel too origin story to me um it's like i we got to know more about wakanda which was great um as for the the villain uh, the main villain of it i thought he was a little bit weak really with the the storyline on that but he was still he posed a great threat against black panther and um so yeah let's just carry on it's like unfortunately i would have loved to have seen uh, the story progress what marvel is going to do now um with uh, black panther we will just have to wait and see but i'm sure they will do the right thing but let's move on to number six and it is iron man now this is the film that kicked off the mcu now as a kid it's like i only knew iron man as the cartoon um the 90s cartoon and i wasn't overly fond with it if i'm honest um it's like it was cool that he had this really cool suit but i didn't really feel much for the character tony stark um i just thought he was a bit pompous and um too too intelligent and things really which is what tony stark is but i love the way that robert downey jr played him as this uh, really cocky uh, character um, but then he learns as well and he wants to change things uh, so that, that's why I really loved and it's great to see the original Iron Man suit there as well and then the development into becoming uh, the red and gold Iron Man so to me this is a fantastic uh, film and it really did kick off my love of Iron Man from the start really and it was good to set the pace for the entire MCU 
So we're going to move on to number five, and that is the Avengers, or Avengers Assemble, as it is in some places too. Now this, I thought, was great. It's like, I thought each character had a great amount of screen time, and nobody was really uh, too much involved with it. Everyone had the same level um, on it as well. So it's like, the storyline was fantastic, and it was great how they brought them all in together uh, to make this story. Uh, it's like, Tony Stark's dialogue in the beginning was a little bit strange, I'm just saying, but um, but then uh, <laughs> it, it became more Tony Stark and, and Iron Man towards it. And it was great with the line of, uh, my secret is I'm always angry, or however it was, so that was good there. Um, all, yeah, like I said, all the characters were fantastic in that. So we're going to move swiftly on then. So that was, uh, oh, I've lost count now, 10, 9, 8, 7, that's number 6. So number 5 is Age of Ultron. Now to me, this was, it's like it was only slightly better than the Avengers. Um, and you could see in this film, the tension between Stark and Thor and Captain America, all three of them really, the uh, the Holy Trinity, if you will. It's like you could see the cracks developing in their friendship. And um, it's obviously there was leading up to Civil War. Uh, but with this one, it was great uh, to see how Vision was brought in. And um, also the scene with... Captain America and almost lifting Mjolnir um, and obviously Vision picking up Mjolnir and it was yeah the comedy in it is great again each of the characters I thought had some fantastic screen time there was some really good jokes in there some one-liners are perfect so yeah that is why it's my number five but we're gonna move um, on to Guardians of the Galaxy now I didn't watch this in cinema because I thought it was going to be very childish. Um, it's like from the trailers and stuff. I thought, oh, this just looks rubbish. But I did watch it then when it came out on DVD. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. The soundtrack is amazing. The old Star-Lord is a great character. Obviously, he's um, kind of cocky like um, Tony Stark. But obviously, he's not as intelligent as Tony Stark. So he tries to pull it off in other ways. And... The whole uh, development of each of the characters. This is kind of like its own Avengers coming together, but it is all the one team. So it was uh, had some great uh, moments with Groot and Rocket in it as well. And it's like you wouldn't really mess with Groot um, after seeing some of those scenes. Um, yeah, but it's great to see uh, the the universe is bigger than just Earth or. Uh, just Earth and Asgard as what you tend to see in the first lot of films. So we're moving into the top three now already. So wow, it's uh, we're moving on very quickly. And this is Avengers Infinity War. Now, um, if you notice, I haven't had Civil War in here at all. And just a bit of spoilers, it is not in my top 10. Now, Civil War to me would be better in Phase 4 or Phase 5 um, because there's more characters uh, to get involved. But obviously now, as of Endgame, we don't have Captain America or we don't have Iron Man, so we can't have that really but avengers infinity was great it's like avengers brought in these six characters separate stories together and then avengers brought even more together avengers infinity war sorry brought in even more now it was great to see the uh, the relationship between iron man and spider-man developing and it's just it was all leading up to the end game wasn't it and i liked the way how it um had a a, a bad ending uh, to it whereas um it's like it's not all um the heroes save the day uh, type ending which i quite like sometimes uh so that's why avengers infinity war is here and i'm gonna say now Endgame isn't. I was very disappointed with a few things in Endgame. It was a great film. I still do really enjoy watching it, but there are a few 
things in it that I didn't like, uh, but I will not be discussing that right now. So we're going to move on to uh, number two. Now, number two is not on Disney Plus. So we're going to pop on over to YouTube and we're going to play this and we're going to mute that. But there we go. Yeah, that is um, Spider-Man Far From Home. So obviously after uh, Endgame, this film came out. So this is the um, the last film of the MCU uh, that has um, been in cinemas. Uh, obviously, we are waiting for Black Widow to come out um, at the moment. And that, this is interesting. This scene isn't in the theatrical version. So, yeah, that's uh, that's quite interesting. I haven't seen the uh, extended cut, so it'll be interesting to see whether that's in it. But, yeah, he is wearing his suit that he wore in um, Endgame. Um, well, Infinity War and Endgame. But it's a great um, storyline um, and is his development post Iron Man. Uh, so he is his own uh, superhero now, and he decides to go um, on a trip with his school friends, but things go a little bit um, awry, but obviously you got um, <laughs> old Nick Fury over here. Um, but yeah, um, I really enjoyed the character of Mysterio. Mysterio is one of my favorite Spider-Man villains, so to see them do it as they did in here, and the um, the... The twist of the story as well, I thought, was beautiful and perfect. So this is why Spider-Man uh, Far From Home is my number two, and I really want to watch it, so I might watch it later. But yes, we're going to stop that. And we're going to move on. So what is my number one? Now, this is very close to Spider-Man Far From Home for me, but I don't know what it was, but my number one is Captain Marvel. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, her character um, as a whole she was funny and quirky and it's, to me she was kind of like a female star lord um, where she was not funny and everything people have said that the story is exactly the same as uh, Captain America uh, the first Avenger but I don't care because um, it's not exactly the same it's got the same uh, <laughs> like treatment for it and stuff but most films do have very similar treatments the graphics and they were fantastic. The storyline was amazing, and uh, Brie um, Larson is actually a great actress. So that is why Captain America is my uh, sorry, Captain Marvel is my number one. And I'd love to see uh, the next installment of Captain Marvel and see what what how it progresses really with her, because obviously now the MCU has opened up more more galactical. Um, than just um, your Guardians and your Thor being uh, just plans because um, in Endgame she is going out to protect other um, people who have uh, other worlds that have been affected by Thanos' snapping. snapping. Uh, so yeah, so it'd be interesting to see whether they can have a look at some of those. I do prefer her with the longer hair than her shorter hair that's in the <laughs> in Endgame. But there we go. That's just me being picky. Oh. If you notice, I have been watching it, but I've stopped it. Look, so I have to watch it again. But yeah, I am um, a little bit disappointed that Spider-Man isn't um, on the on Disney Plus. But if you go back into your and you can see in the corner, you see Sony at, um, Sony Entertainment. And if we scroll down, it says Sony Pictures Entertainment, and that is why it is not on Disney Plus. Um, so Disney do not one hundred percent own uh, Spider-Man. Um, so or even Tom Holland, Spider-Man, Sony still does. And there's an agreement for doing these films and including them in the MCU. So hopefully Disney will buy the rights back to Spider-Man uh, so then we can bring uh, the entire MCU into it. Obviously, we still need The Incredible Hulk as well to complete all 22 films. And then we have Black Widow coming out next year. Maybe, who knows, it keeps on getting delayed. But there we go. But that is it, guys. That is all time we have for this week. So it was a very quick one this week. Um, but yeah, it's like I want to know what your top MCU films are. So if you pop a comment down below. Next week, I'll be going through my top 10 Star Wars films or shows, including cartoons. So make sure you pop back for that. If you haven't yet, it would mean the world to us if you'd hit that subscription button for you to keep up to date with all Disney Plus UK items as well as our other videos. If you'd like to support the channel, then you can tip us using the link displayed on the screen or it'll be in the description. 
Other ways you can support us is to share the video with your friends. We love talking to new people, so share it with other Disney lovers or Marvel lovers as well, and pop a comment down and let's get chatting. Thanks very much for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you who takes the time to watch our videos and to interact with us as well. Hope you have a very heroic day, but until next time, Excelsior!